Hey there guys and welcome back to Unjaded Jade. Ah, oh, summer. As students, we spend the whole academic year romanticizing this time. Time where we can relax, we can wear what we want, we can spend time with friends. And if you've just done your GCSEs or A-levels, this is probably the longest summer you've ever had and you deserve it. But with so much time available, I really want you to be able to look back at your summer and not only have enjoyed yourself, but to feel proud of something you achieved or a new skill that you learned. Welcome to a rapid fire 50 ways that you can be productive this summer. We're talking everything from new skills to learning, volunteering, work experience, making money, self-growth, rest, and there's gonna be a lot. My goal for you is to come out of this video with one thing which resonates. The second you hear it and you're like, oh, I need to do that this summer, just pause the video right it down and I hope you find it useful. Let's get into it. Number one, learn a new language for fun. I'm currently learning Spanish with a Lingoda course and my goal is just to sound as hot as Spanish speakers do. Imagine how many more conversations you open up with the more languages that you know. Number two, pick up photography. Put new effort into your Instagram or Bisco feed. Go on little photo shoots. I got into this with my friends when I was about 16 and we would plan photo shoots. We would plan cool locations around London, make a day out of it. Number three, try and be a creator. We all have a voice that the world needs to hear. Start a YouTube channel, start a TikTok account. Be creative, what do you wanna see in the world? Number four, get into politics. Join a local branch of something that interests you. For example, Fridays for Future is something I'm really passionate about as an organization. And a few years ago, I joined the UK Climate Student Network, the UK SCN. You can go on video calls, you can meet other people who are just as passionate about the same issue as you are and maybe make some change in the world. Number five, try a new sport. But I'm not just talking any sport. I dare you to do something you've never done before. For example, windsurfing or ultimate frisbee. There's something about team sports, about being competitive in a fun way, which is just an amazing way to spend your time and also go out of your comfort zone. Number six, public speaking. There's an amazing organization called Toastmasters where you can go and practice speaking in front of an audience. You can come with a topic that you want to learn to speak better about and get useful feedback in a safe environment. Number seven, pick up cooking. A Especially if you're a teenager, this is one of the most productive skills that you can learn. Because the second you get to uni, you don't have as much free time to experiment and learn new meals. So if you already know how to cook, you are one step ahead at adulting. Number eight, try something artsy. This brings me to the wonderful sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community where you can learn brand new skills, you can master old skills, and you can do it all in your free time for fun with the help of a like-minded community. It's so fun to learn outside of formal education because there's so much less pressure. You can truly follow your interests. And recently I fell in love with this course on life drawing. One of my bucket list items for this summer was to try life drawing, which is basically where you draw naked people and you learn how to represent the human form. And I'm really not a drawer. I'm really not an artist. I guess everyone's an artist, but like I didn't feel like it. But it was on my list for this year because I wanted to go out of my comfort zone by trying drawing. And also it's just a cool story. <laughs> so I found this by Siobhan Tomey and it was a wonderful introduction to how to observe things like an artist, they're like one minute, two minute exercises, contour drawing, all of it. So much so that I even went to an in-person life drawing class just to practice my skills. I highly recommend Skillshare. And if you're looking to improve a skill like photography, then the first 1000 people to click the link in my description will get one month free trial, completely free of Skillshare. And that's how I first used Skillshare. So recommend. Moving on to learning. Right now, I highly recommend making a list of everything you've ever been curious to learn more about. For example, in my university summer after first year, I realized I really didn't know that much about the history of the Cold War or the Berlin Wall. And I was moving to Berlin and I was like, I can't imagine myself moving here and not being more knowledgeable on that history. So make a list anything you've ever wanted to learn more about. Number nine, there are things called Massive Online Open Courses or MOOCs. A lot of universities offer them and they're basically a course to learn about anything that you're interested in. So this can be something from your list or if you had a subject at school that you really wanna dive deeper in, then summer is a great time to do that. Number 10, watch documentaries on the topic. And number 11, read books on the topic. There's just a wealth of information out there nowadays. It's 
Love it. Also podcasts, bonus. Number 12, learn more about your family history, ancestry, or the history of your hometown. Summer is such a great time to explore things about your personal identity, who you are, how you identify in the world. And so devote some time to learning about all the things which have made you, you. And number 13, research some universities that you might be interested in. Moving on to projects. Rather than just setting yourself a random goal like get better at writing or learn how to code in HTML. It's so much more motivating to instead set yourself a project and then learn all the skills that you need in order to get yourself to the completion of that project. For example, number 14, write a poetry book. Set yourself the project of completing a poetry book because then all of a sudden, yes, you're gonna be improving your creative writing. You're gonna be using all these skills in order to complete that project. Maybe you could even do cover art or illustrations. Similarly, number 15, write a novel. Get better at fiction writing, at storytelling through writing a book. Number 16, create an album of music. Number 17, decide to code a video game. Number 18, start a small business. What skills do you have that could be interesting to learn some business skills with? Maybe you like dyeing bandanas. Can you turn that into a small business? You'll learn a lot about things like accounting through doing that. Number 19, create a zine, like an online magazine of information, of photos about a certain topic. This is especially good if you want to get into something like journalism or or PR or writing communications. Number 20, plan a protest or plan a big event of some kind. Number 21, redesign your bedroom. Through that, you'll be learning a lot of skills about interior design. Number 22, start a YouTube channel. Learn how to edit, learn how to make thumbnails, learn about social media through a more entrepreneurial lens. And number 23, make your project a garden. Imagine you'll be learning so much about horticulture, about gardening, about plant biology in order to make this garden grow. Now we move on to travel. People often say, Jade, how have you traveled so much? And a lot of it is because I just looked for opportunities where I could travel really cheaply. I was brave enough to go out of my comfort zone, even though it really scared me. And now I feel so much more comfortable traveling and it's truly changed my perspective on the world so much. Number 25 is work away. If you are looking for a way to travel almost for free, Work away, I just cannot recommend it enough. The idea is you work for a certain number of hours a day in return for free stay, free boarding, often free food. You're with other backpackers from around the world and you can do any kind of work from beekeeping to looking after someone's kids, farm work, building projects, admin. And often you can really experience the local culture more because you're staying with locals. Number 26, stay with a friend of a friend. I'm so sure that through using your network, you know someone who lives in another country and through reaching out to that contact you can travel very cheaply if you're staying with them effectively for free but just go out of your comfort zone do it number 27 couch surf so couch surf is an, a website and an app where people can list their couch or bed or like random space that they have in their house available for backpackers. It's generally safe, like be a bit careful, but most of the time places have been checked. Number 28 is NCS. NCS or National Citizen Service is this amazing six week program. I did it in my summer after GCSEs. It changed my life. You have one week of fun activities, getting to know your team. Then you work on some kind of volunteering project in your local community. It's also so cheap. It was something like 50 pounds for the entire six weeks of amazing activities. 29 is Camp America. So if you're a little bit older and you're interested in being a camp counselor, that can also be a really cool, cheap way to travel and also learn some leadership skills because you'll have your own team of kids. And number 30 is European Solidarity Corps. Another really easy, cheap way to travel. I'm pretty sure this is how my brother traveled in his gap year on some kind of voluntary program. And that was all free for him. Check it out. Next we have volunteering and work. Number 31 is get work experience in something that interests you. For example, I always wanted to be a vet as a teenager. So I spent my summer often working at stables, kennels, animal rescues. I worked at like Hearst magazines in London just to see if I preferred a more PR office life. Like just use your summer to experiment with what you might want to do in the future. Number 32 is shadow people in your life whose jobs are interesting to you. Like ask if you can come in for the day and just watch what they're doing and see if you like it. Number 33, volunteer at a local charity shop. 
this is a really accessible way to meet new people, to also get some kind of work experience, to learn how to handle money in a shop. And this is especially good if you aren't yet old enough to work for money, but you wanna get experience so that you can then get a job really easily. Number 34 is get a part-time job and earn some money. And number 35, even if you don't wanna get a job, I highly recommend making a CV. Learning how to make one now will help you so much when you eventually do want to get a job because you've already got something that you can show with all your past experiences, your skills, your interests. And number 36 is learn how to budget. Especially if you now have a part-time job and you're earning some money, take a look at your expenses, take a look at things that you want to buy and learn how to allocate your money in a clever way. Next we have self growth, which if you've been following me for a while, you'd know is a bit of me. Number 37 is journal every day. In summer, if you have the free time, learn to capture your thoughts, to capture your experiences through journaling. It's just such a useful tool for mindfulness and to reflect on your life. Number 38 is read five self-help or spirituality books. I think self-help is an amazing genre to start where you're evaluating things about yourself, you want to learn about how you can improve in different areas and I just find them very inspiring to get up and do something with my life. You can watch some of my videos if you'd like some book recommendations. Number 39 is meditate every day. I cannot describe how much the practice of meditation has revolutionized my life. I used to struggle a lot with anxiety and now the practice of meditation, it just allows me to be more neutral about my thoughts. Number 40, start yoga for the same reasons as meditation. Number 41, start therapy. If you've been struggling with your mental health, one of the most productive and brave and incredible things you can do is to go to therapy. It is a lot less scary than it sounds. Also, the whole stigma around it is so silly in my opinion because it's basically a tool to learn about yourself. You just understand why you do things and it can help you be a better version of yourself. Number 42, go out of your comfort zone in a way that is personal to you. For example, if you can't swim, maybe learn how to swim this summer. Number 43 is deep clean your house and declutter all your items. This will just give you so much more mental clarity. Number 44, work out your core values. This is an amazing exercise which will guide all the decisions that you make for the rest of your life. For example, for me, I know the core values which are most important to my life. For example, my top most core value is mental and physical health. So if I'm ever reaching a state of burnout, I know that it is more valuable to me to prioritize my health than it is to take on another project. You can watch my video on that for a step-by-step -step guide. 45 is plan what you want to do with your life or have a rough guideline. Think about the things that interest you, where you want your life to go, and then create a little vision board roadmap. And the final section, rest. We so often equate productivity to doing with a tangible output. But truly, if you have been through a stressful academic year, one of the most productive things you can use your time for is to rest, to rejuvenate, to create space for creative energy to come back. Like, don't force it. Number 46 is buy a hammock. Guys, do you know how cool and restful that would be to lie in your hammock in a park this summer? Wow, that is the vibe I want. Number 47 is get lots of sleep. And similarly, number 48 is repair your sleep schedule. Try and get into a routine, not because you have to, but because it's good for you and it makes you feel energized. Number 49 is go on holiday and relax and explore for fun. And finally, number 50 is enjoy time with your friends and family. Soak up the casual magic of being around people you love, of having time for them, be present. And I know for sure you'll come back into the next academic year feeling truly energized and ready to go. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope at least one of these things really resonated with you and inspired you to get productive this summer. You know we love a bit of accountability on this channel. So comment down below one thing out of this list that you are going to do this summer. Even if that thing is rest. What do you want to look back on at the end of summer and know that you did. Have an amazing rest of your day. Bye.